Hey everybody, I'm Patrick and this is Rocky Mountain Style. If this is your first time here, welcome. I appreciate you stopping in. I do reviews, unboxings, and comparisons on various types of menswear, footwear, jackets, all sorts of stuff like that. So uh, today I've got something pretty cool for you. We're going to do a comparison of three fairly similar but also very different uh, leather dress shoes, uh, two wingtips and uh, a half brogue, so to speak. So stick around. Okay, so to begin, I'll give a brief, uh, real quick introduction of each shoe. I'll talk a little bit about each company, then we'll do sort of an in-depth look at the shoe, and then at the end, I'll give you my overall thoughts and impressions on these three pairs of shoes and on dress shoes in general. So uh, first, the Warfield & Grand Rosen. This is a $179 shoe at retail. It's uh, Italian full grain leather, and this color is called Cognac. Uh, second, the Thursday Aviator. This is $175 retail. It's finished in a color called coffee, and Thursday describes their leather as hand-finished full-grain leather. And third, Johnston & Murphy. This is called the Danridge. So this is actually the only one that's not a wingtip, so this one's just kind of a perforated cap toe, um, half brogue, whatever you want to call it. But um, the color there is called tan full grain, which, uh, as you might expect, means it is full grain leather. And at full retail, it's $165, although as of the time of this recording, it's currently on sale for $109.99 on Johnson & Murphy's website. So do with uh, that information what you will. And before we go any further, I do want to mention that uh, this is a sponsored video by Warfield & Grand. They reached out to me about eight weeks ago asking if I'd be interested in doing a comparison of their shoes to, you know, a couple other pairs of shoes. And at the time, I wasn't really familiar with the brand. And in fact, I don't think I'd really ever heard of them. So I did a little research online, looked at their website, um, you know, read a little bit about them, I believe, uh, found a, a review or two from a couple of years ago. Um, and then I talked to the owner, the founder, asked a few questions, and I was convinced, you know, uh, it's a it's a cool company. They have a cool philosophy on footwear. So uh, they let me pick out uh, two shoes to compare to one of theirs. So for theirs, of course, I picked the Rosen. Um, I was kind of feeling some wingtips lately, so that's kind of why I went this direction. But, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, the Thursday and the Johnston and Murphy, I picked those to compare. Um, and you'll, you'll see why. It's, it'll be readily, apparently, uh, readily apparent why I chose this particular lineup of shoes. Okay, let's talk about each company a little bit. We're going to begin with Johnston & Murphy, which is a brand I'm sure you've all heard of. They've been around in the men's footwear space for quite a while, 150 plus years, actually. So uh, odds are you've run across them in your journeys. So they used to be a, a sort of a mid-range manufacturer, but in my lifetime, I believe, they've, they've kind of moved down market a little bit. Nothing wrong with that, just searching for a different place in the market. Um, so most of their shoes now are cement constructed, which is true of these as well. Um, you can find them at many different uh, outlet locations as well as uh, pretty much every major department store. And they retail usually in the you know 140 to 180 range like the rest of these shoes. But uh, in my experience, they do go on sale quite often and you can find them for as little as $100. Previously, they did make some shoes in America, but as far as I know, their last American manufacturing plant closed in 2017. So as of now, that is completely gone. And next we'll talk about Thursday Boot Company. And as the name would suggest, Thursday Boot Company relies heavily on boots. That's their main business. However, if you're going to make shoes, you know, it's not too far of a cry to make a new last, you know, make a new pattern or something for a pair of dress shoes if you're already doing boots. So Thursday has made their name and a very good name, I will say, on making high quality, uh, accessible, affordable boots in that $200 price range that has gotten a lot of people into higher quality footwear, Goodyear welted footwear, myself included. Uh, my first Goodyear welted boot was a Thursday. So uh, I, I know quite a bit about the company. I own several of their products. However, this is my first experience with a dress shoe. Thursday manufactures all their shoes in Leon, Mexico, except for the very few that they still do in America in their Made in the USA series, such as the Vanguard, which is a boot. I uh, believe their leather is also tanned in Mexico at a tannery called La Farc. 
They do offer some Horween leathers on a few of their products, but it's not too many and it's getting fewer and further between. And again, in general, I'm a big fan of Thursday, so I'm glad to have them in this comparison here. Uh, you know, be able to compare the Warfield and Grands and the Johnson and Murphys against something um, that I'm familiar with, essentially. And finally, a quick overview of Warfield and Grand. So Warfield and Grand was started in 2014. The founder had experience at other large shoe manufacturers uh, throughout his career. So he had definitely some experience and know-how to figure out how to start his own company. And by his own admission throughout the first, uh, you know, nine, 10 years of his company or so, he's mostly been focusing on uh, the product side of the business rather than the marketing side, which in my opinion, if you've got to focus on something, the product side is definitely the right way to do it. Because then as soon as people start uh, learning about you, as soon as your name gets out there, you've got a really high quality product to back everything up. Warfield and Grand's focus, like many other companies, is to attempt to utilize the highest quality materials and manufacturing techniques while staying within a certain budget. Essentially, make as good of a shoe as you can and sell it as a low of a markup as you can and try to build your brand that way. And so to that end, Warfield and Grand uses a lot of the money that goes into a shoe on the things that actually make a shoe nice. So on the construction, on the leathers, on the finishing, things like that instead of paying for a marketing budget, which is what you see in a lot of uh, bigger brands, um, you know, really not just in the footwear space, but in all spaces. Each of their shoes that uses a leather sole like these or a uh, combination rubber leather sole are all Blake stitched. They all use uh, full grain Italian leather uppers that in most cases are hand burnished. Uh, actually, I believe all of them are hand burnished uh, looking at the website. And then they all use a, a really nice feeling calf leather lining. So really high quality stuff and really good feeling stuff. And in order to meet that price, as you're trying to do with high quality construction and materials, uh, generally speaking, that's going to be manufactured overseas. Uh, these are no different. So these are manufactured in China. And the founder also let me know that sometime this month in May, uh, if you're watching this during the first month, it's up they will be releasing a new line of shoes that have full leather soles, or I'm sorry, full rubber soles rather. So if you're not a fan of the leather, if you think it's a little too slippery, or if you just don't end up liking, um, you know, the worn look, which doesn't bother me, uh, they will have Blake stitched full leather soles. I keep saying leather, Blake stitched full rubber soles uh, coming soon. So if that interests you, definitely stay tuned and check that out. And with the company overviews out of the way, we're going to get into the shoes themselves. So, of course, we'll start with the Warfield and Grand Rosen. The Warfield and Grand Rosen is, of course, a wingtip derby, as you can see, meaning that the quarters are stitched on top of the vamp. And in general, a derby is considered more casual than an Oxford, all other things being equal. But, of course, there's many things that can move a shoe up and down the formality scale. Uh, Warfield and Grand, of course, does offer both styles. So, as I previously mentioned, the shoe is Blake stitched, and that means the upper is you know, turned under and stitched to the sole on the inside of the shoe without the use of a welt, as you'd see in a Goodyear welted shoe. And this allows a thinner, more flexible shoe that ends up being more lightweight and is easier for a uh, cobbler to resole. I'm no cobbler, but that's what I hear. And then to test out the idea of it actually being lightweight, I did weigh each of these shoes and I actually wrote this script before I weighed them. So I'm glad that I was right. But uh, yeah, the Warfield and Grand is indeed the lightest by a wide margin, as you can see here as I'm putting up this graphic. Uh, that difference really can be felt on foot, in my opinion, and uh, really gives a lot of nice flexibility to the shoe and helps it uh, you know, stay comfortable on a long day of wearing it into the office, which is basically how I've been using it. Warfield & Grand uses a Texon midsole, which is a pretty common man-made construction material for shoes in this price range, so really nothing, nothing crazy there. And then a dual-density EVA insole, which gives a very nice comfort right out of the box. Um, and because of that construction with the Blake stitch and that EVA dual density insole, uh, I found it to really not need any sort of break in at all. I put it on my foot and it was pretty comfortable as soon as I started walking it around and that has continued. I've had no issues with blistering or hot spots or anything like that. The leather used for the upper is very nice. It feels good. It smells good and it looks good. Uh, I do know it's an Italian full grain tannage, but not exactly sure what tannery it is, but it's hard to go wrong with Italian full grain leather. And the hand burnishing, I think, looks fantastic in real life. And if you're a fan of burnishing in general, which I am, 
uh, you'll definitely like how these look in real life. Um, I think sometimes burnishing can get a little bit too, um, I guess the, the gradation of color from dark to light can be a little too stark, but, but in my opinion, at least, especially on the, on the toe cap here, um, they do a pretty good job. And so, uh, I have no complaints really with how the shoe is constructed or, or really how it looks at all. And I think in general, if I only had to give, uh, a net, well, if I had to give a negative, which I'll try to do, <laughs> um, the laces themselves are fairly long. Um, now, of course, this is a very minor gripe. You can buy new laces. You can do different kinds of, um, you know, tying techniques. But uh, once I have them tied, the the um, laces end up being quite a bit longer than I like them to be. So, anyways, there you go. That's the only negative. And in my mind, if um, if that's the only negative, I think they're doing pretty good. Okay, the Thursday Aviator is another wingtip. This time, it's an Oxford. And of course, that means that the uh, quarters are stitched underneath the vamp. And then sometimes you'll hear people call that a closed lacing system. Uh, if you want to know more about this stuff, feel free to Google it. There's really um, quite a few different ways that people refer to these kinds of shoes and the construction. So not that it matters. They're all dress shoes. They all look good. So, so don't focus too much on that. Uh, so this shoe, of course, uses Goodyear welt construction, meaning the upper of the sole, sorry, the upper and the sole, are stitched to uh, another piece of leather that wraps around the shoe right on top of the sole called a welt. So basically that lets a cobbler rip everything apart, put a new welt there, stitch the upper, stitch the sole to the welt, and then boom, there you go, you have a resold shoe. Uh, the reason for a welt, of course, is to provide a little more weather resistance to a shoe. So if uh, you're walking around in the slush or the snow or the rain, uh, it's gonna help keep the elements out a little bit better than a blade stitch. Um, the downside of that, of course, is that you have a, a higher profile on your sole. It's a little bit stiffer, harder to break in, and just less flexible in general. So in my opinion, if you have a dress shoe, which you're likely wearing to an office or some setting like that, you're probably not wearing them around the, uh, you know, the outdoors or anything like that. A Goodyear welt is a little bit of overkill. Um, it's a nice construction. There's nothing wrong with it per se. But you lose a little flexibility, you add weight, and you gain water resistance, which eh, you probably don't even really need. This particular shoe has a darker color than the Warfield and Grand. It's called Coffee. It has what looks to be a little bit of burnishing, but it's more of a uniform color overall. Um, in addition, Thursday says the shoe is lined with supple glove leather, which I'm not really sure what that is exactly, but, but there you have it. And uh, the design choice they've made on the Thursday, uh, which is similar to their wingtip boot, which I actually also have, is this square toe here. Um, as far as style goes, no idea what's in and out, really. I don't follow that kind of stuff, but I, I tend to think that square toes may, uh, may be a little less stylish than a round toe. I don't know. You guys can correct me uh, if I'm wrong in the comments, please. But personally, for me, not a huge fan of the square toe. In the pictures on the website, it actually looks a lot better than it does in real life, in my opinion, because of the square toe. The, the pictures kind of hide it a little bit. But once I'm wearing it, looking down on it, and I can really see that square toe, uh, really ended up not being as big of a fan of the shoe as I thought from a, an aesthetic standpoint. Uh, however, from a comfort standpoint, it's pretty good. It reminds me quite a bit of the Thursday boots I've had, which are a captain, the wingtip boot. Uh, diplomat boot's a bit different because of the wedge sole. Um, and then also a Vanguard, which I picked up recently. So the shoe needed a little bit of break in, but not a lot. Um, it has a, a cork midsole that's there between the outsole uh, and the insole. They use a compressed cardboard um, sort of piece that's in there as well uh, between the insole and that cork filling. So that cork filling, of course, the purpose is to mold your foot as you walk around in it. So that's generally a good thing. Uh, the shoe will get more and more comfortable as you wear it. Uh, however, it does make it a little bit harder to break in. So with the Thursday, I probably wouldn't wear it a full day the first day. You know, just make sure things break in nice and easy. But I have worn this one uh, a decent amount as well. And uh, you know, it's broken in just fine and it's plenty comfortable. And it feels sort of in general, other than not having something wrapped around your ankle, feels pretty much like the uh, boots that they have. So if you're looking for something a little more chunky, um, you know, perhaps more in the English style of shoemaking rather than the European style of shoemaking, which the Warfield and Grand is more reminiscent of, uh, then the Thursday may be something that, that you'd look at. And finally, the Johnston and Murphy shoe, of course. Uh, this one is not a wingtip. This is a perforated cap toe. 
Some people might call this a half brogue, um, but essentially it's, it's still an Oxford shoe uh, with a cap toe and some broguing along the designs on the front and a few of these stitches. Uh, the thing about this, which in general looked okay on the website and looked good at first blush, is that the, the holes for the broguing are significantly smaller and generally uh, more uniform than on the other two shoes. And then that in addition with this piece here, uh, which is, I'm not even sure what to call it, but it has this pattern on it. it the shoe has a lot more of a machine-made feel. Uh, than these two, which have a lot of hands that touch them. I'm sure at some point there's still hands that touch this shoe as well, but it, it just in general, it looks, I think, and feels a little bit more machine made, um, which, you know, if you like that, fine. Um, in my mind, that's a little bit of a negative though. So this shoe, of course, is a full grain leather as well. It's cemented construction, just meaning that the glue holds the sole and the upper together rather than stitching. Um, so that considered to be not resolable, traditionally speaking. Of course, you know, enough money can really get someone to do anything. But at that, uh, you know, if you're going to spend enough money to get a cemented shoe resold, you might as well just buy a new pair of shoes. Uh, the shoe itself also has a very thick, I'm going to try to take it out here to show you, um, this fairly thick removable insole here, which if your foot fits it and if you like it, if you like how it feels, it could be a positive, but I'll be completely honest. This for me was, was completely horrendous. Um, not great and not super happy with it. Um, I have had other Johnson and Murphy's in the past though that were plenty comfortable. So I won't ding it too much for that because I do know that they can make a shoe that's comfy. And if your foot fits it, then it'll be plenty comfy. It's just for me and my shoe or for me and my foot rather, uh, wasn't, wasn't too great. Okay, that finishes up just a quick overview of the shoes. And now I just want to talk about my thoughts in general on these shoes and then on dress shoes in general. So first, let's talk about pricing. So at uh, 165, 175, and 179, in my mind, these are all the same price, so to speak, right? So if you're in the market for a dress shoe, I don't think $14 is going to be the deciding factor. You're going to look at what you like, what fits better, what feels better, um, you know, whatever you perceive to have higher quality. So 14 bucks, not going to make a difference. Um, dress shoes for a lot of guys, and I'm one of these guys are generally something that is limited to wearing, um, you know, on, you know, quote, special occasions or into the office. Uh, if I'm just walking around, you know, going on errands, going on a, a, you know, going out to dinner with my wife at a not nice restaurant, something like that. I'm generally not wearing dress shoes. I'll wear boots in the winter. I like to wear sneakers, loafers, things like that in the warmer months. So for me, my dress shoes don't get a ton of wear. And so I think this is a perfect price point for me, and it's a perfect price point for probably a lot of you as well. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to have a pair of, uh, you know, John Lobs or, you know, a little lower than that, some Lokes or something. Um, but I'm just not going to spend that kind of money on a pair of dress shoes that I don't wear that often. I'd rather spend them on a boot or something like that as, you know, as well. So at $180, you can get some really nice, really high quality shoes that are going to last you a long time, resolable, they look great, and they really evoke a higher price point and, you know, sort of more elegance, I guess, than, than you would normally think of a shoe in this price point. So I think this is a sweet spot. You may not agree with me, but that's fine. But, um, you know, I don't see much of a reason to spend more than $179 when you can get something like this. Um, and, you know, the next moving up the chain, you know, might be something like, you know, Allen Edmonds, which you know, it could be $400, uh, you know, not on a sale. So um, st stick with these unless you're wearing these things, you know, five days a week into the office. And so as I, as I mentioned briefly, uh, well, maybe not so briefly in the overview of the Johnson and Murphy, um, it just feels a lot more man-made. It's, it doesn't feel as special. It feels cheaper. And the fact that it's not really much cheaper than the others to me just sort of completely eliminates it from, from even contention in my mind. And I have owned several pairs of Johnson and Murphy's over the years. Uh, with these, I now actually, this is my second pair that I currently own. I have now two in my closet. Um, but yeah, the, the insole is not comfortable for me. And, you know, the, the design is just okay. So for, for that, I won't talk anymore about the J&M. It's a fine shoe, but if you're going to spend 165 bucks uh, or 279 bucks, both of these are significantly better. Um, and the Warfield and Grand is actually my first Blake Stitch shoe I've ever owned. Um, you know, I've heard of it. I knew how the construction method worked, 
but it's my first time wearing one and it really opened my eyes. So you probably won't be able to see this too good, but um, uh, the, the thinness of the, well, let's do it this way. So the thinness of the sole is just, um, gives you tons of flexibility. The shoe's significantly more lightweight. And since I'm not trudging around uh, out in the wilderness or anything like that, I don't need that extra beefiness of the Goodyear welt. So for me, uh, having now my first Blake Stitch shoe, when I go dress shoe next time, I don't, I don't think I'll look anywhere other than a Blake Stitch shoe. So I'm, I'm, I'm truly a convert uh, in, in that regard. And so really in my mind, personal preference is kind of what it comes down to if you're looking for, you know, this type of shoe versus this type of shoe. You know, as I've said, as I've already said, Goodyear Welt, don't need it. Um, Blake Stitch is nice. Both of these shoes have, have nice construction. They feel good. They feel high quality. But for a, a dress shoe um, that's going to fill that role, the Warfield and Grand is a little bit more elegant. It's lighter. I personally think it looks better. So uh, for my money, um, you know, of course, all of these were provided to me for the review. But for my money, I'd, I'd buy the Warfield and Grand for $179 uh, over these two. Now, if Thursday decided to come out with some sort of Blake Stitch variety and get rid of the square toe, I'd certainly give them another try because I am a big fan of their boots. Um, and hopefully at some point I get to try a Warfield and Grand boot because they do those as well and compare that to a Thursday boot, which I think would be a pretty fun comparison. So uh, if you stuck around all the way to the end, I really appreciate you listening to my ramblings. Um, you know, I always tend uh, to, to hope these things are a little more structured than as I turn the camera on. I just start talking whatever comes into my head. I do try to stick to the script, but I generally don't look at it. So uh, in general, yeah, um, great shoes, both the Thursday and the Warfield and Grand. But the Warfield and Grand, I think easily is the better dress shoe. So thanks a lot. Have a fantastic day.